We've seen how to get information about our objects, but what if we need to get information that these objects create? For example, I need to know the distance between two lines. That info is not displayed in the properties palette or in the list command. There are many tools though and utilities available to us in AutoCAD that will give us this information. If you go to the ribbon, on the Home tab, in the Utilities panel, here's where you'll find most of them. Now open up the Blocks and Tables file. I still have it open from when we went over our last chapter. Really any file will do, but I suggest you open this one up to help follow along. Let's say you needed to find the coordinates of a point, or the coordinates of one of these light fixtures or lamps. Where are they located? Well, if you come up to the Utilities panel and select ID point, or just type in ID on the command line, find the center of the lamp and pick it with the left click. It shows you your coordinates, X and Y, and if you're working in AutoCAD, the Z. Very simple. You can only do one point at a time, but it's quick and easy to do that. It also puts it in your text window, so if you press F2, you can now select this point, you know, your coordinates, copy it out and put it into a report, an email, etc. Now AutoCAD also has another set of tools that will help you measure your geometric shapes. That's called Measure Geom. It's short, you know, or a mashup sort of of geometric measurements. Now you can type in Measure Geom on the command line to open it up, or you can just type in MEA. It's also found right here on the Utilities panel. There are different flyout options for it, a distance, radius, angle, area, and volume. Each one measures what it states, and they all work in similar ways, but measuring the different types of data. So if you type in MEA on your command line, press Enter, you will also get a list of all of these same options, distance, radius, angle, area, and volume. So however you want to use it, go right ahead. Let's start with area. Go to a room, let's say the laundry room. Maybe we need to find the area of this room so we can order enough tile. That's quite easy. Just start picking the points at the corners of the room. AutoCAD will create this green shape for you and it will give you the total area. Wherever the green is, that's where the area will be measured. If you press F8 to turn on your ortho, you can only move horizontally and vertically. But if you turn it off, you can move anyway, and you can visualize and see the shape that's going to be created. Once you're finished picking all of your points, press Enter, and there you go. We're working in architectural inches right now, so it's giving us the area in square inches, and it's also showing it to us in square feet. The other nice feature that it adds in there for us is the perimeter. 42 feet, 1 inch. Now we know that we need 93.229 square feet of tile. So however much tile we need to order depending on its size, we now know. So that's a great bit of information. Just click exit and you're done. Press F2 and your information is right here. I can copy this out, select it, right click, hit copy, and now paste it in an email to my contractor who will then go and order the tile and come back and finish the flooring on my laundry room for me. Very nice feature, very useful. Now, let me show you some other tricks that you can do with it though. Start the area command again. And remember, the command line gives you prompts for different options. I can select an object, I can add up different areas together, or I can subtract out areas. Let's see what happens when I select an object. Now, how much space do I need for this refrigerator? Well, I don't know. I can only pick a closed polygon, and this is a block, so I can't pick it. This file may be a bad example, but I can find out the closed area of this wall. As you see, everywhere that's highlighted in green, this is going to tell me that I have a 68.777 square feet of wall in this area. Now I can keep going in my command. I can find different things that I want, but let's continue with the area. 
Now, let's start with the add. Let's say I need to know a couple of different rooms. I need to know the total for tile that I'm going to need to order. Well, I can do each room one at a time, write them down, and then give them to the contractor, or I can just do this all at once. So we're going to pick add area, and let's just start picking our shape. And you can do any shape that you need. It cannot select arcs, but it will do straight lines from point to point. Once you've finished picking everywhere for your area, click enter. And now the command keeps that area in memory and allows you to continue on. So I need to do this room now. And I have my running O snaps on so that it'll automatically pick the endpoints for me. And that's a great tip. Once I've picked that shape, I press enter. And as I'm going along, it's telling me how much area that I'm using or going to need to use. Going to this room now because it also has tile. Press enter. Now I have these three rooms. Now this is a hardwood floor right here, so I don't need that room. Again, hardwood floor, hardwood floor, and it looks like I'm finished for the main level. Now I have these three rooms, I press enter, and I have my total area. Pretty neat. Now I can pick something here, any shape again. Press enter, and well, I can't continue on. I can't add more to it. I can't do anything else. I have to start with the add area in order to get started. So if I start with add and I pick my shape, whatever it might be, press enter. Now that I've added something to it, I can pick the subtract area. So let's say I don't want this part. Now the part that's in red will be the part that's being subtracted from the green part. So once I've picked everything, I press enter. And if that's everything I've done that I want to do, I press enter again, and here is my total. That's just the green area, not the red area. So that's nice if you have a special case. For example, if I wanted to work on the kitchen area, make sure though that you start off with the add area. Pick your shape. I'm just going to limit to what I'm doing here to give you an idea so we don't take forever just clicking. Here's my area for my kitchen. Let's say I don't want tile underneath my sink. Well, now I can use the subtract option and pick some points. These aren't the exact points I need, but in order to speed things up, I'm just going to give you an idea here. So there you go. Now I know enough tile minus the sink area of what I need. Now that's very useful, very useful indeed. And the fact that it puts everything in your text window so that you can copy it out and insert it into a report or to an email or so that you can just isolate it in some way is also very useful. Now the other features work essentially the exact same way. So let's say distance. I can find the distance between two points. There it is. If I start the distance command again, and I pick my first point, I get the option to be able to select multiple points or just pick my other point. So if I select multiple points or type in the letter M, I can measure several different points. So I can get the length that I'm going to need across this wall, or I can measure the perimeter of something. And it tells you your total distance. So it's very similar. Radius is also very simple. I just find an arc or a circle. I pick it, and it tells me the radius. You will be given the radius and the diameter, which is very nice. 
It is limited though that you can only pick one circle or arc at a time. It's not like the volume or the distance where you can measure multiple points or multiple rooms. So you can only measure one item at a time, but that's okay. That's typically all you're going to need. Now the angle command, there are a couple of different ways that you can use it to measure something. You can pick the object and it's very visual. It shows you the angle here and it tells it to you. I can pick two lines and it tells me the angle. So that sort of thing. You can also pick a vertex and then define the two lines. So start the angle command again. And it tells you here to select an arc, circle, line, or specify a vertex. So if I want to specify a vertex, I just type in the letter S, pick a point, say right here. Pick my first line, that's my starting line, and then it measures the angle. And it tells you what it is. Let's try that again. Start the angle command, press S to specify a vertex. I'll pick that point there. And now I'll pick this point here, and then I'll measure down to here. That door is open at 90 degrees. So that's how you do the angle command. Quite simple, very straightforward, pretty quick, and easy enough to use. Now, the last one I want to look at is the volume command. The volume command works exactly like the area, only once you've found an area, you give it a height, and then it will use the basic area times the height to give you the volume. So if we wanted to find the volume of the kitchen, you can find my area, and I'm going to simplify this area again. Press Enter, and then I tell it how high to create it. So if I type in three feet, it gives me the volume in cubic inches, which is my basic unit. So it will give you your volume in basic units, or the units that you are being set in. So if you need to find a distance, a radius, an angle, an area, or volume of something, these are some very useful and great tools to use. When you're finished, just click Exit.